Jeff from Home Renovision here. We are here to talk today about drywall tools and materials, specifically over 40 different things that you should own for sure, you might wanna buy, and a few things you might even wanna rent to make your life as easy as possible to make a painful job for DIYers rather enjoyable. Number one on the list, of course, is a knife. Now this is the Ulfa HB. It is the wide, fat knife. It has snap-off blades, which is number two you're gonna want a box of snap-off blades. Now generally, if you're buying a knife for the first time, it'll come with an extra couple blades. I did all of this kitchen and dining area here with one blade. I still have a few snap-off sections left. The secret to cutting drywall, of course, is cut the paper. Don't stick your blade into the chalky middle on the inside and your blades will last a long time. Once you've got that taken care of, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a carpenter pencil. There's a difference between this and those little, little tiny ones. This lead is really strong, really fat, and will last you a long, long time. So this is what I use to mark my drywall. In the category of tools you must own is a drywall knife. Because if you don't have some of the most professional tools, this will at least give you the ability to cut all the holes and rectangles and big angles and inside outside corners so that you can install your drywall. This one blade here is a lot of teeth that go in two different directions. So when you're cutting, it doesn't have a lot of friction. So speed is important, right? Not how hard you're pushing. And that is the secret to using that. Of course, when you're dealing with drywall, a must have is a mask. Not so much for when you're installing it, but when you're sanding it. So there are two masks that I would recommend. One of them is one of these bad boys here. A mask like this is worth about 60 bucks. Rechargeable, replaceable filter, sorry, on the end. They're about $15 a pop but it will last you for months and months, even if you're working on a regular basis. This one here, this is from Moldex, and I've got this linked on our Amazon page. This mask is awesome. It's a, got the vent here, okay? So I can actually wear this. I can actually wear this and still talk. Now I don't have a nose piece to pinch because it's built in. This is actually formed for your bridge of your nose. It's actually, it's really cool. Right? So you don't have to worry. This has a much higher performance value than those masks that have the little breathable pinch nose thing on it. They're garbage, right? They only filter out about 50% of your air. This gets up in the 85 to 90 range, all right? This is the 99.99, but this is a pretty good substitute for occasional dust. You, know, you can get about 10 of these things in a box and it's pretty affordable. So I definitely want to get you a mask. As far as the workhorse, you definitely need a tape measure. If you're working with metal studs, make sure you get a tape measure that has a magnet on the end, because then you can reach out, magnet to the stud, and then pull your reading. If it's not a magnet, any tape will do. Make sure it's high vis, and it has a pretty decent standout so that you can grab things across the room and then pull the tape tight to measure. Okay. Next two things go hand in hand. You must have drywall corners. I've never seen a room in my entire life that didn't have at least one corner on it. <laughs> so suggest you buy outside metal corners instead of the paper beads. The paper beads are available. It's more for situations where you don't have framing and you're floating a corner and you don't have anything to nail or screw to. And just a pair of simple metal cutters like this, aviation snips, straight ones, all right? You can cut this corner with ease. Now, you also need to install your drywall. So you're gonna need the drill and you're gonna at least need a Phillips bit. I recommend these little gizmos here. This has got a depth setter on it and you can get a package of two of these for like five bucks. That's also on the Amazon line. Being able to have a depth set with your screw is so important because if you break through the paper, you aren't actually holding anything and it will just cause you a lot of grief because when you mud it and paint it, it'll keep popping and you'll get bumps and chips and it's a mess. The other thing you're going to need are screws, all right? Regular half inch drywall takes one and a quarter inch screw. If you're using 5 8 drywall for any kind of soundproof application, then I would suggest getting the one in 5 8 And if you're going with the second layer, the second layer will need a two inch screw. If you buy your screws at a hardware store where you can buy a whole bag full and you buy by the pound, you will get twice as many screws as you would if you go to the hardware store where they sell it in a little plastic container. Just a thought. A couple of pounds of screws here is 12 bucks. A couple of pounds at the harbor store in that bucket is 25. Okay, the other thing you're gonna need, and I think this is a must have because this makes it possible for you to cut and measure your drywall. It sits right on your edges and allows you to score straight lines with your knife. 
I put that on my must-have list, although if you're a contractor, you're probably going, we don't do that. Where I'm from, we just take out our knife, take our measuring tape, hold the knife to the side of the tape, find the edge of the drywall, and use my finger as a guide, right? And you cut like that. I get it. I don't suggest a homeowner doing some drywall work on the weekend is going to be very proficient with this technique. So do yourself a favor and get yourself a square because that will help you immensely. And if you want to see how that is used, we do have a video outlining all the details of how to use that tool and all the options available. We'll put a card up here with a link in the description as well. You can go and check that one out. Now, that takes us to a place where now we have our drywall installed, almost. One other thing I'm going to suggest is some kind of foot pedal. Because when you're doing drywall, we put the ceilings on first, and then we hang the second sheet nice and snug up against the ceiling, and then we put the bottom sheet on. And if you're in most places in the world, the second sheet of drywall, even after it's installed, has a bit of a gap. So you put this underneath that drywall like a foot pedal, and you can step on it and lift your sheet up nice and snug. This kind of a snug joint right here allows you to have a nice, easy finish. If there's a huge gap, it adds an extra step, adds extra material, adds extra time. So for five bucks, you can have this and lift your drywall. It also acts as a rasp, so when you cut your drywall, you can clean your edges up if necessary. Kind of a handy tool to have. Now that leads us to taping. And then we're gonna be done with the must-haves in just a moment. Paper tape. If you have paper tape, you can tape anything. Inside corners, outside corners, butt joints, factory joints. You can do anything with this stuff, okay? You gotta have paper tape. You also are gonna need a four inch knife because that's how you apply the tape. That's how you do your corners. That's how you apply your mud on all your inside corners, okay? And then you're gonna need one of these, a 10 inch by four inch straight blade, not the curved ones, straight, okay? And if you wanna watch our video series on how to tape, you can also click that link, check it out in the description below. But we got a taping series set aside for you to show you my system for homeowners for taping, which is foolproof. It's not like what you've seen on TV. I don't use really weird tools. These two and a hawk, this little flat piece of aluminum pan, if you have these three tools, you can tape like a pro. We'll show you how in the other video. Now, now that we've got the ability to measure and cut and install and tape, wow, that's everything you need to know. The only thing that's left is sanding. Still a big fan of the Radius 360. I have it on my extension pole. Okay, so nice and simple, nice round head. It's got a spongy core. And this will do a nice job of finishing and changing the texture of the mud to be very similar to the paper. So after you've primed, you don't see the difference. And then when you paint, your walls will look amazing. Now moving on. Options. That's the must have. What you could have is different tape. You could have regular fiberglass tape, okay? You could have ultra thin fiberglass tape. That's right, this is available in a thinner version. So when you're taping your butt joints, you can now use fiberglass instead of paper, if you prefer, because fiberglass you can install with a quick set mud, and then you can get your second and third coat all in the same day. So if you're doing a small space, using ultra thin fiberglass tape on your butt joints allows you to finish the job much quicker. They also have, Fiberglass tape for wet areas. They also make a mud just for wet areas. Although, if you're doing a shower and you're using green drywall board, just keep your colors the same. Green drywall, green tape, and don't use mud in the shower. I always suggest using a cement. Use your, use your tile cement when you're taping with this in the shower. And then we also have, from fiber tape, the flexible corner bead. This is a cool product because you can just cut off the piece that you need. Ready for this? And it has a, a joint here already made, okay? And you just fold your corner, instant outside corner. And it gives you a nice beveled edge, right? Very similar to a metal corner bead in this situation. Okay, now, this is kind of cool just to have in the box in case you ever need it, right? It's that last minute, I gotta roll the corner bead right here just in case. What are you, like three feet short or you got a tricky spot, you can, Peel that, you can apply the uh, drywall compound, stick it in, use your four inch knife, press down the edges, and then fill in from that ridge. And it's strong enough that you can actually use your metal tools on it and treat it like a metal corner bead. That stuff is money in the bank if you ever run into trouble. 
But I'll be honest with you, my favorite is right here. Let me get you a piece of this. Bum, 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 bum. Now, this is very similar, okay? This one also folds, okay? The difference is this one folds into a bunch of different angles, both directions, okay? Now, where that tape won't do that, it'll only do an inside corner. This one does outside corners. And now, this is an interesting cardboard compound, and the back side of this here has got a texture on it, so it really holds the mud incredibly well. So you can make an inside or an outside corner, right? That would be an inside corner. You just fold it the other way, be an outside corner. Done. You could do 45 corners. You know like those old houses with the sloped ceiling? You can set this up so it'll go here and then on an angle. And then what happens is this corner right here, inside, it actually, it fits the corner of the knife. Okay, see that? And it's a guide. And you can scrape that nice and tight. And then when it's dried, you come from the other side and you get a perfect corner. Hence the word. This is called Perfect 90. <laughs> it's amazing. And if you are in creative situations, having a box of that around is really, really, really handy. Now, let's get rid of that. Ah, we got all of our tapes done now. Okay. There we go. Let's talk tape. Because you don't have to just pull it off the roll and have it hanging around. This is a great little two-in-one applicator for the fiberglass mesh. And the way this works is you start here and it's just on a roller. And you can just press it into the wall, run down to the corner. The other thing it does is you can pop this corner out, pop the wheel out. Now watch this. Remember I showed in another video how to use mesh corner and the tape in the corner, sorry. All right, look at this mess. Tell me that isn't brilliant. Done. Now for everybody out there who was hating on me in that video, you can't use mesh in the corner. They didn't make this because you can't, right? The reality is, is if you're gonna use mesh in a corner, you gotta use the right mud. That takes us to the next product we're gonna show. Sheet Rock 45. Huh. Because I live in Canada and I have Sheet Rock Company, all right? We also have CGC, we have Certainty, we have a lot of different drywall manufacturing products out there. So the, the brand name is not as important as the number 45. There are a lot of companies making a 45 minute mud, which is rhetorical because it usually takes longer than that for it to actually dry. But if you add some hot water, it can be done in 40 minutes. If you have uh, well water, it can be done in 20 minutes. But the point is this, that's a quick setting compound. It's got a chemical reaction. It bonds to the mesh and the drywall incredibly hard. All right, and it does not tear and crack. If you use ultra-purpose ultra mud or regular purpose mud or machine mud with that mesh tape, you're gonna have a problem. But with the 45, it works amazing. The other tool you might wanna have is this. This little gizmo here, you can put your paper tape in so that if you're working on a ladder, you just set this bad boy in your pocket and you have access to your paper tape. You can cut it, stick it in, finish, let it go, move around, grab it again, and it's right there ready to go. Handy dandy. Okay, moving along. Um, things you might want other than a metal corner. I grabbed this from the drywall store the other day, and what this is is an inside corner intersection, okay? And they make the pieces, just like the metal corner bead, out of plastic, and they, they join together kind of like Lego. It's awesome. So you can stick these on the wall and have perfect rounded corners. Okay, you don't have to go with a square corner. You can go with rounded corners. That's an option as well. I'm not a big fan of the rounded corners, but they do make tools now for putting on the outside. So it's a rounded corner, outside corner trowel. And they make all of these little gizmos here now. So you can get really nice finished corners that aren't gonna crack. When they first came up with rounded corners, we got a lot of tiny little cracks around. But nowadays with this little invention here, you're crack free, it's the way to go. Now when you're installing your metal corners, a lot of people use screws. Drives me nuts. Purpose of this demonstration, I'm gonna show you this. Whoop. Here's a screw, and here's a drywall corner bead now. Right? Now, 
there's a row of holes in a corner bead, and then there's a row of exterior holes. That's where the fasteners go, not down the big holes in the middle. All right. When you put your corner bead on, the first half an inch that you've got there material-wise is other drywall. There's nothing there to fasten to. So you always use the fasteners on the outside of the bead. But the difference between the screw and the nail is, when you put the nail on, it's flat. The screw always has a raised head. It's not designed for use with the corner bead. Okay? So, when you're putting that on, you want to go to the store and buy a box of these drywall ringed nails. And that is the secret to success, which means you'll need a hammer, but no big deal. Everybody owns a hammer. And then you just tap that into the framework and you're good to go. You won't have any problems. Next on the list, a knife. That's right, you need a second knife. Because <laughs> if you're like me, you're gonna lose the first one halfway through the day. So have two of these bad boys. <laughs> okay. More options. Laser level. This is for throwing a line on your wall, okay? And this is for every time you have a scenario where things aren't square. You can drop one of these lines down and have a point on your wall or on your ceiling that you can measure from to help make sure that your cuts are perfect. Now, that's a trick to learn, but honestly, if you're gonna be doing a lot of drywall or you just don't like having big gaps everywhere that you gotta fill and patch, by that. Now, if you do have to fill and patch some big gaps or you have damage, you can always buy this stuff. This is amazing. Now, this is just a fiber, fiberglass mesh. It's quite thin. It's a little bit more, a um, little more dense than the fiberglass tape, but this stuff is awesome. So you open up a door and you get a puncture in your drywall. All you do is add some compound and you can stick this over top of the dent. All right. If you have uh, an old house with plaster cracks, Okay, then all you do is you pull out your kills, you spray down the plaster crack, add regular drywall compound over top of that once it's dry, stick this on top of that, and you can tape that in and make your wall brand new again. Now, while I'm here, I should do this. Next tip, you can't just use regular compound over that. You want to spray your kills on that brown paper first. That'll seal up the paper so that when you put the compound on it, it doesn't end up bubbling. Which is a great point because every once in a while, especially when you're new with this drywall game, you'll have a weird corner, it'll be triangular or something like that. You'll cut it, but you won't have it in your mind to cut it upside down and backwards. So you go and install it and you'll be like, wow, it fits, but only if the brown side is down. You can screw that in. It'll work just fine. But after you've installed it, spray it with your Kills oil spray, okay? And then you can use the drywall compound over top. If you don't, it's gonna bubble and peel that brown paper off and you're in for a disaster. Okay, next thing you should have with you, this is the, the wish list is the rotas. Now remember, you can cut everything with this, but this makes the job flawless. When you're installing drywall, you don't get a perfect cut like that using a cutout tool and then sticking it on the wall, but this cutout tool lets you install the drywall, then cut it out and it looks like that. Next tool that you don't need, but you might want, is this right here. This little bit from DeWalt. This is awesome. It's spring-loaded, all right? It's also adjustable and has a locking ring to set the depth. Now, these little tabs here don't really fit in these drills very well. They do have a tendency of falling out, but this one is made just like a regular drill bit and it locks in place. It's also a depth setter, so when you screw in your drywall, it's the perfect depth every time and how you know that is the perfect depth is just before you put your mud on, you take your tool, check. If you hear any clicking, like, well, they're all done that way. <laughs> if you hear any clicking, trust me, your screw is not deep enough and you want to have one of these, so you can just hit it another shot. That'll take care of that. As long as you can run over your screws without making noise, you're ready to tape. The next thing is this clip right here. It doesn't look like much, but there's soundproofing hat channel that this gets clipped into. You screw this to the wall and then you put on your hat channel and this is for sound absorption. This helps to eliminate sound transfer from one room to the next. And if you want a really good version of it, right here, the back bar here also has foam on it. If you want to learn how to do that, again, card, description, check it out. The next thing you might want 
is to go the next step up. Now you can buy this, it's about 80 bucks, comes with a cord. You can get the three or $400 version and you can put your battery from your drill on it, but really it only has one function, installing drywall. It's the same thing, it's a screw gun. It has the same adjustable tip, a little different design, but it has the same function. The other thing that this drill does is it has a little spot down here, a little switch. So you pull the trigger, you flick the switch on, and it stays on. And the motor runs continually, and you put a screw on, and until you put pressure on that, it doesn't turn, right? So it's really quick. You have it on, it's pistol grip, so you're always pushing straight up. You use your last two fingers here as the trigger, and you just set that up, and you can just throw a screw on, and throw a screw on, and just go all day long with this bad boy. It speeds up the drywall installation process by about three times as much when it comes to setting the screws. Alrighty, let me see. What other tools and tricks do we have in our... Ah, yes! For mixing your mud. Let's move this out of the way. You're going to want to have a pail. You're going to want to have one of these mixing paddles. Mine's filthy, but because it sits in water, it still makes perfect mud every time. And I have one of these slow mixer drills. Man, if I had a dollar every time I saw a supposed pro on television not using one of these to mix their compound, this is a heavy duty, slow moving drill. And it will mix compound without making a bloody mess. Because when you buy it pre-mixed in a box, you gotta put it in a pail and add a couple cups of water and mix it up. That makes it creamy and smooth and it makes the consistency and the texture is such that it reduces sanding. It's worth the weight in gold having this because when it comes time to sand and then do your prime check, you're gonna thank me. Speaking of prime check, you're gonna to wanna to have trouble light. Grab one of these, it's on a 25 foot cord. It runs about $12 at the Home Depot. Right, you throw in a 100 watt light bulb and then you can run around and you can put light from all different angles and check it for all the imperfections after you've put the primer on because once you've used your primer, which should have high solid content, the wall should be white. And this will cast shadows on anything that's got not perfect. Then you can just take your four inch and your hawk and go around, do touch ups all day long and make it all look beautiful. Now, if you don't have a hawk, for your mud, right? You have a couple of options. You can take a scrap piece of drywall and you can put your mud on it. This is my leftover 45 minute mud, nice and hard, which is why it doesn't crack when you use it with a mesh. And you can work right off of here, all right? This is a little oversized, but you get the idea. Or you can just about grab anything else that you can find around your house, throw a little mud on there, and you can use it as a you can use that, going around doing your taping. It's awesome. Now, we also have one other thing that you are gonna wanna have that's not a necessary tool, but if you're working alone, it becomes almost impossible to work without it. And then I'm gonna show you a revolutionary new product. It's gonna change your life forever when it comes to drywall installation. First, bum, bum, bum. last two things I wanna show you. This is for wet sanding, okay? Yes, you can wet sand drywall. The secret here really is this, this coarse plastic material on the outside. You put this in a pail and you squeeze it like this to get the water out. And then you can just rub the wall, right? And it'll get rid of all of the ridges and, and help to work out the scratches. And then you flip it around and you give the wall a quick wipe. And then you wash it and you do the next spot. Now, if you're doing a small repair in a finished space like a living room or a kitchen and you don't want dust everywhere, then pick one of these up. It's just a few bucks. It takes a little bit of getting used to to be really good at it, but once you're proficient with the wet sanding, it'll change your life because then you won't have to do all the cleanup afterwards and you won't have to find dust landing on every surface in the house. Now, the other thing is this. These little plastic gizmos here are kind of cute. I don't know why they made them so bloody orange and outrageous, but the point is this. If you're working alone, you can put this underneath your drywall and then carry it, okay? You just set it down here. You lift your drywall, set this underneath, and you can put your hand on top and you can carry your drywall all by yourself. This is a lot safer than having it up over your head and then bending down underneath the doorway as you're walking around, right? Just carry it where you're comfortable. This is only a few bucks and it might be worth its weight in gold. Even if you're working with somebody else, we did another video where I showed you how to carry the drywall. Again, if your arms are sore or you've got elbow issues, this is a great way to just hold everything nice and square. Reduces a lot of the stress on your joints and your muscles. Great little tool to have. 
All right, now, and of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you, go rent a drywall lift, especially if you're working alone. If you're working with two people, I still recommend it because it'll cut down your risk of injury and nothing slows a project down faster on the weekend than throwing out your back or tweaking your shoulder. Feel free to get it. It'll cost you 40 bucks a day. No big deal. It's worth the money because it'll speed up the installation. It'll help make it flawless and put everything right where you want. And you're not going to end up falling off a ladder or throwing out your back. Okay, definitely worth it. By the time you're done installing your ceilings, the old fashioned way, climb up ladder and holding over your head. Most guys I know that don't do it on a regular basis are already exhausted and ready to take a nap. So if you're going to do your ceilings and have a nice, successful, productive day, rent the tool and then take it back at the end of the day when you're done. It's worth its weight in gold. Now I'm going to show you the revolutionary product that's in this box. Bum, bum, bum. And I'm going to install it so you'll know how to use it too. Because once you've seen this, you're never going to go back to what you used to do. So here's my new product. Now here is a typical drywall exhaust area, okay? I've got my forced air coming through the wall instead of the floor because I love doing that because it blows hot air across the floor instead of up to the ceiling. Seems to make a lot more sense to me. And I've got a product here that traditionally you would just buy a plastic or metal floor grate, stick it in the wall or one of those white plastic reels and screw it on and they all look like garbage. Well, the folks at Airy Event have invented this. This thing is freaking awesome. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install this, and then I'm gonna open up these dampers to let the air through. <laughs> and then this is here gets installed as a decorative finish. And it snaps into place when you do it right. Okay, there we go. And what, what you can do is you can actually paint all of this. All right. So once this is in place, you can have all of this painted and then it's invisible to the naked eye. So here we go. It fits in It fits in the hole. Mhm. Mm Just like that. Now, I knew that I was going to be using this, so I actually framed this whole thing out so that I could install. If you try doing this with drywall screws, you will drive yourself crazy this is of a thicker gauge steel and you're not going to bend that into the wall. So, blue ring nails are an absolute necessity in this situation. Don't try to cheat with screws. It'll make the drywalling process an absolute nightmare. Because the whole wall will be covered in ridges. But if you use the nails, you can do this with a couple passes of a four inch knife. Just demonstrate this in a second. All right, here's my knife. Here's my pre-mixed mud. Okay, here we go. <laughs> now, I am not using my hawk here. I probably should be. There we are. Okay, there we go. Now, when that is dry, I'll be able to come by with another coat, smooth all that out. And then if you paint with a sprayer, you can spray all of that and leave this on the ground and spray it as well. If you don't, you can just install it and then hit it with the roller. <laughs> now, if you're using a really wild color, you might want to roll this separately and hit all these other sides. But here we go. We just stick this in. Boom, there we go, heat vent. Now how sexy is that? So if you wanna know how to reach the folks in the area, check out the video description down below. We'll have a link so you can go and buy these from their online store. And if you wanna learn how to use the taping tools and learn the process for taping and drywall and finishing your own house, then click the link here. We got a playlist set aside with every step and every tool you're gonna to need it's a really simple program made just for homeowners like you. You can learn how to tape like a pro.